Hi there. In addition to my reading that I normally do with y'all, I like to also teach history to students. And I found a really interesting project online that I want to try out today. And since I'm a newbie at this sort of thing, I haven't done it too often. I might make a few mistakes. But this is how to make your own for writing in cuneiform. Cuneiform or cuneiform was uh, the ancient writing of the Mesopotamian peoples going all the way back to the, uh, the, the, the culture of Ur and Uruk, the Uruki, also called Sumerians. The Uruki created this form of writing, which is a, a, a uses a pen or a, a stylus that then is pressed into clay, wet clay, and the clay is fired, and then it's used in order to um, create documents of different kinds and messages and, and abstract thoughts and Eventually, is used even for writing down artwork like the Epic of Gilgamesh. So this style of writing, which goes way back, started with pictograms, which are little um, pictures of things. And those pictograms then over time became more and more stylized, more and more artistic, until eventually they became just these series of uh, like almost like uh, lines, little sticks that represented the thing that they originally were supposed to look exactly like. For those that might find this strange, when you look at um, cuneiform, it doesn't seem to look like the actual thing it's supposed to represent, but our own vocabulary does this as well. We use the alphabet, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, eta, zeta, theta, so that alphabet, A, B, C, D, um, is actually an abstracted form of language based upon original pictograms in the same way that cuneiform is an abstract form of writing which was based on original pictograms. The classic example for this is that the first letter of all alphabet, A or A, uh, was based originally on a picture of a bull, which in ancient, I think it's, I think it's Babylonian, was the word was Alep. And Alep, or Alef in Hebrew, um, becomes alpha in Greek and eventually comes down to us as a. So alep, that was the original word that they used to, to talk about a bull. And a bull, alep, was drawn with the horns and all and the face of the bull and then the body of the bull. And after time, that pictogram changed so the body was dropped out and only the face was actually drawn. And then that face eventually was uh, made into a very stylized face. So you got two horns with a cross over them like this. And then that was flipped and we got ourselves the letter A. So from the horns of the bull to the letter A, Alep became Alpha or A. Our own alphabet comes from these pictograms. So we're talking cuneiform, which is an abstract um, alphabet, if you will, that is originally based upon pictograms. So they created these, um, these tablets using either a, what are called a stele or stele, um, these styluses, uh, sorry, styluses writing on stella, which are pillars, or um, they use tablets, or they would sometimes use what's called a, um, it's, it's, a it's a roll, like a, um, almost like a toilet roll, if you will. It's a cylinder seal that you would take and you'd roll out onto wet clay and that would also make images that were um, cuneiform. So we're gonna make a stylus here today. Now I'm using, I've got this from the internet, so I don't know, this hopefully will work for us, but we'll see if it happens or not. This is just a typical big bowl um, pair of chopsticks. I have no affiliation with big bowl aside from the fact that I like the food. And a pair of chopsticks here, I've already opened mine, so you open up the chopsticks, Take them out, separate them. And then you have two sticks, which are essentially, this is what your stylus is, it's just this. But in order to make it more like a stylus, the stylus was something which was shaved down to make a V shape. And so we're gonna do that using a piece of sandpaper. So you got your chopsticks and you got sandpaper. Now this, I have two in case I screw up one of them, I can always do one later and make an actual um, stylus that works. But with the sandpaper, you're just going to sand down. This is the, the, the square end of the chopsticks, not the pointy end. Sand down the square end of the chopsticks in order to make 
a stylus. Let's we'll see if this works. Sanding it. Oh, you could, oh, that, wow. So you could already see, if you see in here, this is, uh, this is already becoming more of a V shape. It was originally, here's the original. It's more of this square shape like that. But just with a little application of elbow grease, you get this, which is more of a V shape. And we're going to um, shave the other side as well to make a stylus in the ancient world. So we shave this side, we're gonna do this side. Again, we'll see if this works. I've never been known in my family, I've never been known to be a very handy kind of guy. I like projects, but um, half the time when I do the project, I have to do it four or five times because I screw it up, you know? So it gives hope to anybody else out there who isn't particularly handy. At least I hope I give hope. Maybe you like look at me and you're like, I'm not that dude. <laughs> we'll see. So far so good though. It's like we're getting ourselves a, a nifty stylus here. Do a little bit more on the other side. My worry is that I'm going to end up just waxing away everything. Oh, that is so cool, look at that. Okay, there it is. You got yourself a stylus. That then will allow me, put it up against my blue background, that then will allow me to press into wet clay and make a V shape into the wet clay. And the way that they would use their styli, styli, is this would be the V shape and then that would be the, um, the line that they would create. So this end would be creating the line and this end would create the, the pointy part, <laughs> the, the arrow part. So, um, and they would flip back and forth. A good scribe would be just, you know, flip back and forth while he's making his letters. So that'll be stage two of this whole live demonstration of how the ancient world works, I suppose, is to go and make some cuneiform using my stylus. Thanks. Good luck making your stylus. If you don't make the stylus, enjoy the big bowl. See you later. Okay, so here then is part two of how to write cuneiform uh, or cuneiform. And you have to bear with me because I have to do a little bit of technical mumbo jumbo here, altering things in order to make this to work. So first thing I'm going to do is flip my camera I'm going to have it pointing down. It's on a tripod right now. I am pointing down so you can see what's going on here. And I'm using these stylus that I made just a few minutes ago. I'm using some clay, wet clay. My daughter has hanging all over the place. So, and then this is just some wax paper that I have in order to keep everything nice and fairly dry. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this document here, which is, um, you want to have something that will show you what cuneiform looks like. So here's, here's, a, here's cuneiform as it's translated into the alphabet. You can get this online fairly easily. It's a fairly easy thing to have. And I'm just going to take it and see if I can't do a little bit of writing of my own name, my short name, Will, in, um, in cuneiform. So first thing you want to do is you want to smooth out the, the clay, make it wet enough so it actually smooths out. It's a little cold today, so it's not terribly smooth. They would make their tablets, these little bullets almost, and um, they weren't huge. Most of them are pretty small, and they were used normally for political documents or they found grocery lists or lists of goods. So most of the documents we have from the ancient world are not actually terribly poetic or grandiose. Like there's a whole um, pile of archaeological evidence that was found in the city of Oxyrhynchus. And these are called the Oxyrhynchus um, Horde, or the Oxyrhynchus documents. Most of the things there are just like lists of goods, lists of cattle, 
uh, small messages here and there. It's like like uh, like the common things that go all around in the post office these days. You know, most of them are not terribly epic. And you had a few things that were epic later on, Homer and the like, writing in the 800s. But most of the things we have that have survived are not terribly epic. The reason being is that, um, first off, uh, there were so many of those non-epic things in the ancient world, as there are today, they were bound to last a lot longer than the epic things, of which there aren't that many. Okay, so now I'm going to see if I can't go ahead and make my own name using the uh, the alphabet that I have in front of us. And we have, the, uh, with the stylus, it's got a pointy part, you know, a V-shaped part that will correspond to the letters that we want. And let's see if I can get this right. Any scholars watching this, I beg pardon for violating uh, scholarly work here, because I'm not trying to do that. I'm just, I'm just some guy. I'm a dude dressed as a dude playing another dude. So here's what I think we're looking for. There we go. And then this with the, the line attached to it. And then this. Obviously, I am not of the skill level of a scribe, but fortunately, I'm also not of the skill level of a Pharisee. So, okay, so let's see. W, I suppose I have to make it longer that way, but we'll just do it um, as it is this way. I. Now, I don't know whether or not they would have drawn the lines all at once or they would have drawn... Uh, all the triangles all at once and then added the lines or whether they would have drawn triangle line triangle line I don't know like with our writing when we write we you know we write I dot right or T cross your T but sometimes when you're writing quickly you might write you know consonants W I L L and go back and dot your I later so who knows maybe maybe it was uh, both styles who knows uh, so anyway I'm gonna do it this way this time This corresponds to the vowel will I in, uh, in my name. Okay, good. And then L's, and, and this will be, we'll just make two of these. Wow. And this, and then they put lines. So here's the lines. Screep. And scrape, scrape, scrape like this, and a scrape here, and then we do it again. So, two L's. Boop, 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 boop. And no doubt you had various um, styles of writing. That is because each human being is different. We write differently. But um, one thing th that seems to be the case is that scribes were fairly well trained. They were very well trained young men who began their practice doing just this sort of thing on wax um, or on clay that was then uh, wetted and reused. And they would do it over and over and over again until they did it just perfectly, exactly a certain way. And so they were very well trained to write a certain way. So probably not a great deal of variance in handwriting. Uh, and there weren't that many scribes. I mean, it was a fairly small bunch of folks. But that's my name then in uh, cuneiform. Uh, zoom in at all. Um, no, I can't apparently. Uh, my name in cuneiform. At least my shortened name in cuneiform. And I would go and fire this in a kiln of some kind and make it hardened and pass it then on to a courier and he would send my name across the empire and I would be famous or slotted for death, one or the other, that sort of thing. The other method to make this would be to do it in dough. And I may actually do that as a next project is to make some dough up and then put it in dough and fire that as a sort of cookie that we could then eat and we could consume the thing. And maybe I'll do that with a cylinder seal. That might be kind of fun. But uh, until next time, this is my uh, name in cuneiform and I wish you luck in trying to um, create your own stylus out of chopsticks and then put your name into clay. It's a fun little project, especially if you're teaching young people about cuneiform or if you're trying to find out what the ancient uh, methods were. 
sometimes it's fun just to figure out how did these people live? They weren't that different from us. They certainly had things that were different, but they weren't that different from us. And when you do this, you get a sort of sense of all those scribes sitting there, uh, cross-legged, making these these letters over and over and over and over again until they got it right. And then inscribing in them lists of things and names of kings. So until next time, thanks very much. We'll see you.